Triumph beer. Is that your special beer? Yep. You just it's made it? Beer. Just made it. That's it. It's trans beer. That's special beer. Strange. That's pretty cool. You just made it? Yep. Canned it and everything? Yep. That's pretty cool. <laughs> well, let's do this shit. Hello and welcome to Built with Pride and Built to Ride. Today we're going to show you how to do your push rods as if you were on the side of the road with only the tools you carry in your tool bag. So, pretend we're on the side of the road. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the tools out of my front bag that should be on the front of every Harley. So what you're going to need for this job is you're going to need a flathead screwdriver, socket wrench, spark plug wrench, this one is a 13 16 pair of snips, a half inch, a 7 16 and some good old solder in it. I'm recording. Oh. I'm just catching B-roll. Oh, Alright. You being old. Alright, well first, you want to take the spark have, plugs out. You don't have to talk. Huh? You don't have to talk yet, if you're not ready. Yet. Oh. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. You ready? Are you going to start on this side or that side? Yeah, we'll start on this side. Take spark plugs out. Okay, we'll start over here. Okay, first you want to pull off your spark plug wires. Then you're going to pop your spark plugs loose. What size socket are you using there, Mac? Oh, 1316. 1316's alright. I ain't loosen that one up enough. <laughs> alright, you want to pull your spark plugs all the way out. Then, I'm going to climb down here, and my bike is a kickstart, but a lot of people don't have kickstarts, so we're going to do it the old way with the tire. So you're going to rotate your tire forward, put it into first, put it into second, into third, and finally into fourth. Well, my bike is a six speed. But most bikes are stock four speeds of this older style bike, so I only did it up to fourth gear. It doesn't matter. If you got a six speed, you can call it to six if you want. Fourth gear is plenty fine though. Alright. So now you climb your old ass underneath yep. the right around the side, side of the road, so I'll sit on the ground. That and my bike don't fit on a lift. So all you're gonna take your flat head and pop all these covers off. A one, a two. Three and the four. All right. Now, now we're gonna grab your solder. Now we have a special tool for this, right? Yeah, but you're not gonna have that on the side of the road. We'll feature that here in a little bit. We'll take a piece of solder, cut yourself off four links. It's always good to have solder in your tool bag, just in case you gotta solder something back together or for this point exactly. What I like to do is take these old pieces of solder and roll them up into a thing and put them back in my tool bag. Alright, so then we're going to take all of our rods loose. We're going to take the solder, bend it into little hooks, push it up over the top of the rocker. Look at that. Look, just look at it. That's going to hold the tubes out of the way so it makes it easier to work on so you're not fiddle fucking and fighting the thing the whole time. Have you ever fought a fuck fiddle? Yeah. Did they fight I ever did. Yeah, they're pretty tough. Okay. It's three. Of course, I cut number four a little too short. All right. Now you got all your rods up. Now you ain't got a fiddle fuck. Now you ain't got a fiddle fucking. You're gonna want to reach in your little bag. Right here. 
That'd be a shop rag. Those uh, us tramps never clean our bikes. So they're pretty fucking nasty. Then what you want to do is you got your exhaust, your two outside, and your intakes are your two insides. So you want to rotate your tire. It's going to be really difficult. So you'll see your push rods coming up and down. You want to wait until it's all the way down and it's not moving. Then you want to check it for tightness. That one's actually a little tight. And tight means what? Tight means that your valves are open. The tighter they are, the more the valves are open. So you don't want that. What you want is you want this to spin freely without having any tightness to it. Like right there is a tight spot. So what you'll need is a half inch and a 7 16th. And these are super cheap ones because that's the kind of tools you should keep in your tool bag as ones you're not afraid to lose. What you're going to do is hold the bottom one. Well, I grabbed the wrong size. Dumbass. You might as well delete that part. Shit. That's staying in it. Sometimes you gotta go back to your tool bag here and grab the right wrench in here somewhere. Let's take a look. Yeah. Down in there deep, digging there deep. Was that it? There it is. There it is. And if you have your tramp beer around, you can always take that. I recommend on any road trip to have plenty of tramp beer. So then you're gonna take this top, you're gonna break your jam nut loose. It's like that, where she's nice and loose. Mm. Then you wanna check your tolerance, so you can see it's not even spinning now. So you're gonna hold this top one. That's the actual rod. And this is the adjuster. You're going to go in with it, which is what's going to loosen it. Now you don't want no up and down plane, you don't want no side to side. So I'll bring it in. That's just a hair too tight, so we're going to turn it past where that point's sticking there. And we're going to lock down our jam nut. All right, now our jam nuts loose. We got that good and that's good. Good spin on there, no up and down, no side to side. So that one's perfect. Now we're gonna move to the intake. So I know you're asking yourself and you're probably saying, well, how in the hoot do I know when I need to adjust my push rods? Um, so we're gonna go over some things here, uh, give you a little idea of you know uh, a couple of causes uh, or a couple of uh, um, I guess you could say uh, telltale signs of Tom Fuckery when your push rods need to be adjusted. All right so if you're having issues where your bike's not wanting to start say it's turning over really fast but it's not firing up that usually means that your push rods are tight and that your valves are all, all completely open so you have no compression inside of the motor. The other symptom is it's backfiring and missing a lot. A lot of people think that I have to do with your timing. Um, you're better to check your push rods first and then go back to your timing. That would mean that they've loosened up on you and you're getting really bad slap, which you can normally hear in the top end when you're riding. So if you're getting a really annoying slap coming out of the front of the rear of the motor, it's a good job. It's a good idea to pull over for the night, wait for it to cool down, and then check all your push rods and make sure that. They're all set back to where they need to be. Make sure you drink some tramp beers. Yep, ask yourself some tramp beers, a couple smokes. Spilly Jack. Remember, shirts are for work. Like uh, my intake over here, she's good. Got no up and down. Got plenty of play. You can roll it freely with your hand. It's not going up. It's not going side to side. So we're going to not mess with that one. And we'll move on to the intake on the rear side. And as you can see, I got a whole bunch of fancy oil lines in here that are going to get in your way. 
But same with the front one, you want to rotate that tire around in fourth gear until you see that rod come up, and then you want to see it go down, and then you want to see it not come back up. That means you're at the very bottom, lowest point on that cam. So we're going to reach in there, we're going to check it. See, that one has a little bit of play in there. It's a little wiggle. Just a little bit. So we're going to grab our two wrenches. We'll go ahead and pull that road debris out of there. Mm. We'll break that jam nut loose. We're gonna reach in there and do a little bit of tightening on that because it's very minimal. So you'd say probably go about a quarter turn at a time? Not even a quarter. Not even? Well, that should be almost perfect. No up and down. Okay, grab the rod. Tighten that jam nut up. you got to remember most people will crank the living shit out of these jam nuts. But it only takes a little bit, just until it's snug. So don't crank the so shit. So don't crank the shit out. If you crank the shit out of it, you'll end up breaking it. That one is perfect. Now we're going to do the rear one. We'll bring her up. Watch her drop and see her stay down there. See, she's got a nice spin to her. Yeah, it looks like she's good and tight. Doesn't need any adjustment. So, now I'm going to show you how to put it all back together. So, we, uh, we have a couple fancy tools here at the shop to make our life a little bit easier, but obviously on the road, you're not going to be able to do that. This tool here, uh, you can buy online. Uh, yeah, I think it was like 20, 25 bucks. And you'll see uh, here in a second why this tool here makes it uh, a little bit easier. That's a tad bit easier. What you want to do is take your flathead, make sure you get your little spring down there, make sure the top is all the way in. Then you can grab this fancy tool if you're at the shop down the road. And you actually use this to push that spring all the way down. You can grab one of your stamps in here and they'll slide right in and then you just let it go. Bada bing, bada boom. Now we're but gonna show you the hard one. That's a big ass tool to keep on, on your bike on the side of the road. Now we're gonna show you so the- I'm gonna show you the road side way. The road. The ways of the road. The ways of the road. So you're going to do the same thing, take your flat head, make sure you push that all the way down, make sure the top's all the way in and set. And then you're going to take your little piece and you're going to put it up in here. And you're going to take your flat head, stick it up in here and push that spring perch all the way down. Boom. And slide that in there like that. That's now, actually so easy I forget that I had that specialty tool all the time. Now you probably won't be able to do that as easy your first time. No. Uh, it takes a lot of practice. We've done this a lot, so don't get discouraged. They're kind of a pain in the ass. They can but, be. Uh, There's always that one that doesn't want. I'm waiting for it. They're, uh, There's always that one that wants to fight you. They're real thin metal and stuff, so just take your time. And that and this got brand new push rod tubes on it, so they're not all gnawed up. The older ones they get all gnarred up, and then these want to stick to the back. So a trick for that is you can push this down and reach around the back of your finger and pull it towards you. That way it's not pinching itself. All right, do the same thing with this one. This is the real tricky one because it's behind my oil lines. And this is the one that's gonna fight me. Yep. There it goes. And I like to try to make sure these are straight. They do tend to vibrate around. Got one more to put back on there. Grab flatty, make sure that sucker's up in there right. The other one, sit it in there, take our flat head, put it right against the back of the spring, and then push down and walk that thing on there. Now she's all oil sealed back up. Well, the best of this old bitch can be oil sealed. Then we're gonna get up, we're gonna put our plugs back in, put her back in neutral and try to fire her up. All right, we're gonna take our Delcos, and we'll screw them back in there by hand. If 
It also doesn't hurt while you got this open. Check your gaps. I keep a gap thing on my key ring at all times. I usually keep mine around 32, 35. We prefer the Delcos. They're, yeah, uh, the Delco. They're, uh, they're, they're the golden spark plug here. Yep, Delco. Copper core. A lot of people don't know this too. You don't have to crank these in. These are not a bolt. So you don't want to crank them. You do not want to crank them so in. So tighten them down really hard. Nope, you want to snug them. So you're going to put them on there. Right. Until they tighten up. And then crank the shit out of it. No, you don't want to crank the shit out of it. You just want to snug it in there. So you're talking like 80 foot pounds, <laughs> right? I'm talking like maybe five. Okay, all right. All right, put the plug wires back little. on. And one, and two. All right, then we'll rotate the tire. Get her back into neutral. There you go, back into neutral. And she should be ready to fire. We'll give her a whirl. What do you want me to do? Oh, videotape you? Okay, yep. okay, here we go. Okay, um, we are inside of a shop. Jesus Christ. <laughs> we are inside of a shop, so I do have a center stand under this. Pussy. But if you're on the side of the road, you're not going to be able to find a center stand. Nope. So if you're by yourself, a uh, parking block works real good. Uh, good size log. You know, you're going to tear up the bottom of your bike, but it's better to tear up the paint than, tear than the be struck on the side, of the side of the road and not be able to get nowhere. I'm going to drop her back down. So now, why wouldn't you just take this to your local Harley dealership? <laughs> because this job right here is going to cost you a few hundred dollars at a local Harley dealership. You can do it yourself. You can save yourself a lot of money. And you can and have fun. Good, yeah, and it's good to know, know your bike. You can have fun with your buds while you're doing it. That way, if it runs like shit after you do this, you know you did it wrong. All right, now I'm going to attempt to fire it up. And give it a whirl. We'll see if Penny's still a uh, an old uh, one-two kick bitch real quick. I'm sure there's a lot of oil in the bottom end. She ain't gonna be a one-two kick. Oh, she gonna be a two kicker. I bet you. I'll put a dollar on it. You wanna put a dollar on it? Yo, me a fucking dollar, bud. Now mind you, this mic hasn't been started in at least three months. Fired right up. This is my first little bike. So if you plan on working on your own bike, uh, you're probably going to want to get adjustable push rods because they do make... The, yeah, a lot of the newer style Evos and the bigger motors, the new, they're all solid push rods. There's no adjustment in them. Now, if you're going to run a hotter cam or something like that, you're going to want an adjustable push rod because if you're just running your stock solids, there's a good chance you're going you're gonna to break something. So um, these are aftermarkets. These are SNS adjustable push rods. Um, you can find, you know, knockoff cheaper brands and stuff, but I recommend doing adjustables because then you have the ability to adjust it. Now, I do run solid lifters. I don't have hydraulic lifters. So, I do adjust them a lot more. Usually after a few thousand miles, I'll adjust them. Um, I do put a thousand miles on this bike and usually a single trip. So, I do adjust them a lot. Like, that's probably... This year, that's probably about the fourth or fifth time I've adjusted them, just because I ride it so much. Um, all bikes are different. Some bikes, they tighten up your push rod. Some of them loosen up. Mine is a tighten up. So they get to the point where it's so easy to kick that it has no compression. And it'll still run, but it'll kick like it's got no compression. So that usually means it needs an adjustment. Other bikes, they'll start loosening up. You get a lot of chatter. You get a lot of slap in the top end. That usually means it needs an adjustment. 
Um, I did it with the back tire, rotating the tire in fourth gear because a lot of people don't have kickstarters, but if you do have a kickstart, you don't have to put it in any gear. You can just take the spark plugs out of it. You can actually rotate the push rods with the kicker arm, which is a lot nicer. It's a lot easier. You don't have to jack the bike up on, on the side of the road or nothing. You can leave it right flat on the ground. You can just do all your adjustments with the kickstarter. And that's what this bicycle pedal is right here, right? Yeah. That's that's how you kick. So do you you just kick it like? Yep. Just like that. Like that. Okay. All right. And if you are in the market for some push rods, some adjustable push rods, don't forget, TBC is an official V-twin colony. Uh, drag specialties. Uh, I don't even know. CC, the list, bros. CC bros, the list goes on and on. Uh, if you need adjustable push rods, we got you forward. covered. We got adjustable push rods on mark. We can get you a set. Obviously, being a dealer, we can make the price. We can hook you up cheaper in retail. Lay back and spread them wide. This ain't no sportster, it's a super guy. <laughs> So, push rods we just did were on an 84 shovel. Is there a difference between a shovel and iron? No, I mean, I do the same adjustments. Like I got a 67 shovel over here that I, do, that I did it on when I rebuilt that motor. Um, same with a pan head, same with an iron head. I mean, even some Evos, I mean, most Evos, Sporties, they come with solid push rods, but you can get aftermarket adjustable ones in there, which I recommend just because I like to work on things. Um, that and the, uh, the stock solids, they'll wear out after a while and you'll start getting a really bad slap in them. Plus, if you want to run a hot cam or you got a little bit of motor work done, you're going to run, around, or run adjustable push rods because they're adjustable. Essentially, though, it's still the same concept. It's still the same, same concept. Procedure. Yep. And any bike that has adjustable push rods, that's pretty much the same, pr same procedure for all of them. So I know all the Evos, they don't have the push rod tubes like these where you can pop them off and lift them up. They're usually solid tubes. They actually drop in and you put, them, you put the head on top of them. You can buy those two aftermarket um, push rod tubes that you can take apart like I just did. That's an option. I mean, we specialize in old vintage bikes, so most of our videos are going to be on old vintage bikes. So if you want to keep your bike running top fucking notch and you don't want to be out there kicking it eight times and look like a dumbass, uh, this is something that you're going to want to do. Uh, Ladder, if you don't want to do it, send it to us. Now, I believe the real feel outside is uh, currently 17 degrees. I'll go ahead and bet you this dollar back that you won't go rip this son bitch around the block real quick. Fuck yeah, I will. <laughs> now, if you're anything like us, if you fire up your motorbike, nine times out of ten, you're gonna want to ride that some bitch. That's damn right. Oh, that's cold as shit. It's super cold. That's alright. Let's get your safeties. Where's the safeties? I got some. Here we go. Woo! Safety right, first, motherfuckers. Let's just make sure she's fully operational. Now watch, she ain't gonna fucking Keep start. Probably not. She's probably gonna be like, you gonna take me outside in this fucking cold? Woo! Woo! I can feel it over there. Watch out for that ice out there in the middle. You may not be able to see it. That whole center patch right there is solid ice. <laughs> now you the turn, grip it and rip it. I just made this dollar. Now I gotta give it back to him. <sighs> Jesus. 
You win some, you lose some, though, I guess. Whatever. I really hope you didn't eat shit down the road. I hit Ice Patch. This video would take a really different turn if that happened. <laughs> nope, he didn't eat shit, and I lost my damn dollar. Son of a bitch. Oh yeah, that rock solid, boy. Woo! And that's how we do it. Crazy bikes, crazy motherfuckers doing crazy ass shit. Tune in next week. Shit's about to get real crazy. For real, for real. Like crazier than my ex-wife. That's cold. And crazier than Mike's ex-wife. Yeah, my ex-wife's pretty fucking crazy. Fucking man. If you got an ex-wife, comment in the box below. Tell us about it. <laughs> See you next week. Make sure to check us out on our YouTube channel, The Transmitters Choppers on YouTube. And as long as you're on the interweb, take a break from watching Pornhub for a second and head over to our Facebook page. Just search Tramps Vintage Choppers. It's not that hard. Uh, and make sure you... Uh... Hey! You ever heard of Instagram? You can catch us on Instagram too. Transmitters and Choppers on Instagram. Do you want to buy some sweet, cool, red Transmitters Chopper shit? Then make sure you go to our website. Here's the full website, not just part of it, the full one. HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www.transmitterschoppers.com. You can get all our shirts, uh, our custom made parts. You can you send us a message, message. Yeah, you you want message if you want something made. You want something custom made. You can, if you want a, a dildo uh, hand shift or you name it, we can make it. Solid metal, rubber, I mean, it don't matter to us. We don't care. Uh, yeah. So, Mike, what was your favorite part about our first segment? My favorite part? Yeah. My favorite part was that my bike kicked over on the first kick. Yeah, you sold me a dollar. Yeah. If you could just oh, give right. that, you give that to me now. That, that yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need that real quick. Yeah. Let me see no. it. Yep, smells like strippers as usual. Yep. If you got any ideas, like cool ones, that you want us to feature something you need to know about working on your bike or fabricating or anything yeah. like that you can just ask us we'll yeah, just us. ask us we'll do a whole fucking segment right. on it we won't tell you no yeah so just yeah just leave it in the comments or whatever i know. never say no but my safe right. word is cheetos right yeah hey motherfucker make sure you tune in next week for another sweet ass video that we're gonna make sweet ass bikes sweet ass dudes sweet ass shop so make sure you check us out next Saturday for our new video. Um, we're going to be doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Uh, we might do some top end rebuilds. Uh, you never know. It's going to be some cool shit. Uh, we got some custom some fabricated parts. Custom fabrication. Uh, uh, i got a couple gas tanks in. I'm going to do some fabbing up on. Uh, we got a panhead project that we got to get going on. Uh, got a six to seven shovel we're working on. Jenny shovel. All uh, kinds of shit. Yeah. So, make sure you tune in, learn some shit, and, uh, yeah.